You yeah. do that, I'll do that. Okay. We'll get like a big one. I want it to take you, a long time. Yeah, well, you should do a puzzle of Jared Goff. Oh, my gosh. And I'll yeah. do a puzzle of whoever the number one quarterback is on the list. <laughs> oh, baby, that's right. It's Chris Sims unbuttoned. It's episode 507. Ahmed Fareed is yep, here on a me. Monday. Sorry, it's Monday. I'm it's still Monday. getting the mouth loose a little bit. All right, me I'm too. a little foggy. I did do one show already, but it didn't help with my English, as you could tell. It didn't take. No, it did not take. But with the quarterback countdown, shall continue on a Monday in June. We got eight through five today. Ooh. Some good ones here. I mean, we're into the cream of the crop we right are. here. I mean, these are the special quarterbacks in football. And you're a special host, and it's good Thank to you. see you on a Monday morning. I got back yesterday, reasonable time from yep. Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Uh, got to hang out with someone yesterday for the first time ever at our baseball game. Kind of a big deal. Albert Pujols. Oh, man. Probably the biggest named. Oh, let me think here. Biggest named star you've ever been around? Is that I've what you were ever, about to say? I've ever worked with. Yeah, probably. like that you actually like had a conversation with and yeah. talked to him. Yeah, he TV. was up in the booth. He was making right. his broadcast debut on yeah. Peacock. Yeah. People say, like, oh, what, what's Peacock? It's the network of Albert Pujols. That's right. That's right. That Major League tag- Baseball. That should be the tagline now. <laughs> Super nice guy. Right. He was, like, so nice. And we were on the same flight um, out of there. And so we were in the airport together. Did you guys sit close to each other on the we plane? Had di- we, we did. He huh? was right in front of me. Yeah, you were both in first class. We, okay. had din- we had dinner together. What? We had, it was Nick Swisher was there too. Who well, was like, okay. He was okay. necessary because he's the life of the party. That's a damn okay right there. So it had dinner with Pujols. You and, had dinner with Albert Pujols. Yes, at just this little tiny restaurant, you know, there were like three tables there. Right. And he paid for us. Okay, good. That He's cool. rich. He pulled it out. A lot richer than you. Credit card, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Although I was like, Comcast can pay for this, but I didn't oh, say Oh, you're that. right. You're right. Duh. Um, you could have really impressed them there. And then uh, he... Uh, Save your hundreds of millions. Yeah. And then one person came up to him yeah. and was like, this was before dinner came. He was like, hey, it was a younger guy. He was like, hey, are you Albert Pujols? And he go, yeah. yeah that, that, that. He had to confirm, yes, I am. And uh, he's like, can I get a picture with you? I've always rooted for you. And so he did. He got up and took a picture with him. And then right after that, someone else came up and was like, I don't want to get a picture with you, but I want to shake your hand. And he was super nice about it. Yeah. But I was like, man, this could snowball. Right. Like, it, oh, you know, in a, a couple hurry. people come up. And it only like, takes one or two to give everybody else the confidence who's around. I got nervous. Yeah. But then it stopped. And right. And we had a good conversation. Well, you were in a restaurant with three like, tables. Let, so let how many people could have came yeah, up? Yeah, you're right. you're right. There weren't that many people there. It was Pittsburgh late on a Sunday. Um, so it was cool. All right. I'm going to be on cloud nine for a long time. That's now. really – all right. So more importantly, I mean, give me the f- – report here on what like when you shook his hand what does his body he's look a giant, like he's a giant human being he's a giant he's yeah, a he's, giant he's yeah. a big he's a big dude he's, he's a giant th- human it's, being. it's thick he always looked thick like he had some legs and ass on him yep yeah and, and, and who knows he's retired now for yeah. a few so months he's he got a little be, belly on him might, now too might, I, i've seen some pictures more, a little bit more <laughs> gotcha. maybe um but no he's big it's like that's what happens with all these major league players especially pitchers yeah. but with albert too it's like you shake their hand it's like you too though yeah, yeah. it's the same thing with you yeah they have giant Your fingers hands. go up the, the my forearm right. like midway through the forearm and i mean it's just like you guys like that's the one thing i think for a pro athlete especially pitchers quarterbacks probably too yeah it's like it's the just hands the hands right hands it's are like giant an unspoken hands. talent uh, or unspoken spoken tool yeah that that can translate to talent in football or basketball or any sport well, either one it's yeah. like how you spin the baseball it does or how you, you spin, the yeah, football. spin the football right because hey listen you, you ever hear michael jordan they talk about his hands all the time too same type of thing i mean his ability to palm the ball yeah. and manipulate it and get people to think oh i'm gonna throw it here oh nope i kept it i'm shooting it over you now yeah it's it's definitely one of the unspoken characteristics why andy reed every time he shakes my hand at the combine he goes Oh, ten and a quarter hands because he's uh, he's aware <laughs> he's of that. He's thinking about he's it. He's thinking about that. He knows how important that is. So, okay, damn, you got that's pretty special. The, I know. with Albert Pujols. I, I mean, know. that that's a. Legend, and he was talking about legend. all the things he's gonna he's gonna be doing it. You're gonna see him everywhere. Yeah, I mean, Peacock, MLB Network. Who knows? He'll be he'll be everywhere. He's trying to get into the broadcasting thing. And part of me thinks I was like. I was like, he's he's Albert Pujols. He's made all this money. I'm he shocked do he's trying to get into this so, so aggressively. You know what I think it is sometimes, too? And maybe it's baseball more than any other sport because it's so every day and right. you're around the guys for half the year is that that just becomes who you That's, are. They want to be around the dudes yes. and, the, and the environment. And you're right. They, they do seem like they – are a crew of you know the the boys being together and they get used to that. And I I could see that that could yeah. be a hard thing to get 
to to get rid of or get out of your life. Yes. When you've played that long. But uh, I, I was going to ask you something else about him, too, and I forgot. Damn I didn't it. get his number. No? So I think that's probably the last time I'll ever talk. Unless he comes back on Peacock. He'll be which back Which could on. happen. He will be back on. Yeah, he had a good game. Had a good game, two to one. Two to one. Pirates fans are kind of pumped up. Okay. Um, so yeah, flu- the flight back was good. And I was like, we got to get back because I want to be well rested, because we are in the top eight, and this is where it gets crazy. This is where it gets crazy. Um, or I it, don't think it's that crazy. No, it's not that yeah. crazy. Uh, is there anything you want to share about your weekend though? No, my we weekend. No, uh, crazy. I mean, I, I had a I had a weekend of like you know I, again like I've always told you I'm, I feel like I'm an Uber driver on the weekend right now and like <laughs> it was, the kid had a baseball tournament in Jersey yeah. right so I was down there uh, in in Edison, New Jersey. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. Okay. So down in that area. Uh, Saturday and Sunday didn't stay the night. You know, it was only like an hour and ten minute drive. Yeah, right. So I was like, okay, we're gonna come home. We had a wedding shower at my house on Saturday. Oh my gosh! Right. So I wasn't there for most of that, but then got home Saturday evening around eight forty-five or so, and of course, still people were there. Uh, it's my sister-in-law is getting married in a few weeks, so that was there. I'm kind of tired for my day, but now you got people all around the house. That got me, you know, to have a few extra drinks on a Saturday night. And then I had to get up Sunday early to drive back to New Jersey. So I regretted that part of my weekend for sure. Yeah. Where I was like, man, why didn't I call it quits at like 11 o'clock or 1130? Why did I hang out with everybody a little too long there? But uh, other than that, it was a good weekend. I'm sure they were glad you did, though. I I, 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 I guess. I'm sure. I'm always good entertainment at that time of the night. (laughs) Exactly. You you, you definitely are. And uh, and you you were so swamped this weekend. And we'll peel the curtain back. Yeah. You said, we got to put the podcast off an hour so if you're getting this podcast an hour later on your feed it's my fault it's chris's busy weekend it is it was well well, like you know how i do this so when we get to the part of like hey it's we're going eight through five i go back i watch eight through five one more time and you know i tinker we know that and we'll let people in on when this is all done like Mm -hmm. did i twink tinker a little bit from my original list yes were there guys that were maybe 24 and then I went back one more time and went, you know what, I'm going to switch 23 and 24? Yes, I did do that. But so I want to go through that process always the day before we talk about it, right? Just again, I get one more fresh look. Let me write a few bullet points down. Let me see if there's anything that jumps yeah. out to me. But since I was at Jersey at a baseball tournament, I couldn't do it. I thought I was going to have some time in between the car, you know, sitting in the car between games and all that. But there was just constantly like, you know, take me here to get pizza. Take me there to get you know Gatorades and I couldn't do it so that's why I texted you guys yesterday in between the games where I was like I'm not going to get a chance to write down a few of the notes can we bump the pod back a little Uh bit so I can just you know have a little time last night when I got home and this morning it gave me a time to to dive in a little bit and we were all very accommodating uh, very accommodating but Kristen said but we're still stopping at 12 so you have 38 (laughs) minutes to to get your list done it's only four QBs we might actually do that yeah Yeah. so let's get into it we'll start with number eight but first we will hear your quarterback song, which has become a viral sensation at this point, uh, to get us into our top eight now. Oh, quarterback list, quarterback list, that's what Chris has to do. Quarterback list, quarterback list, motherfucking, motherfucking quarterback list. Wow. That is awesome. That hopefully, was amazing. Hopefully you're watching on We need to put YouTube. that on social media right there. That was well or done Peacock. by EJ. And, it was at EJ? And Wyatt. I'm one of EJ the two. EJ and Wyatt. He, it's always They're those. the creative so. brains behind those videos. Definitely. I mean, they, they do a really, really good job. Wow. Finding the baby pictures there? They, and they look very Next much level like shit. Those. Where the f*** find that picture of me? That's what I want to know. Yeah, who gave that to I you? don't know where they got that one. That was a good one there. Damn. So so some of those faces you saw there, who knows? Maybe we'll talk about them today, but maybe we'll talk about them coming up on Wednesday. Exactly right. Because those are basically the quarterbacks we have less, left here. Uh, we've got, I, what do we have? We have two tiers today. We two have four tiers. quarterbacks, two tiers. We have our first quarterback is in a tier all by himself. Where he should be. Where he should be. Where he probably would like to be. Exactly right. That's the way he thinks about himself. So this tier is called still a goat, question mark, though. He's not going to like that question mark. Uh, your number eight quarterback in 2023 in the Chris Sims top 40 quarterback countdown is? Yes, it is Aaron Rodgers, and he's a GOAT in totality. We know that. This is one of the greatest of all time. Don't get that messed up for a second. Now, is he still greatest of all time caliber right now, 2023? Well, let's, we, that's, we're going to see this year. Okay, I think my headline, if I had to break down Aaron Rodgers and say one thing to you, Ahmed, or our, our listeners out yep. there would be, 
way too conservative for the talent he still has. I don't think anybody in the top 10 left more plays and yards on the field than Aaron Rodgers, mm. right? And you know I don't like to say that in a, in, in a derogatory you way. You love Aaron Rodgers. I love Aaron Rodgers, but I know he's got more. And I think that's the big thing that, you know, when you break him down, yeah, it was the worst year of his career, right? Worst and year of his career. Worst year of his career. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I don't. I think when you take in mistakes made, you know, some of the stuff surrounding him as a leader – and then, yes, the results on the field and the things I'm talking about with turnovers and inopportune times, missed throws and inopportune times. Just think about just think about your Lions game at the end of the year, right? Yeah. There was three or four throws where we all went, I've never seen Aaron Rodgers miss those throws in my life, right? I mean, in big moments. It was early third quarter. What, he missed two or three guys in a row at one point. So there was a little of that last year and then a little bit of like what we talked about when we broke him down, where you go – pull the trigger man you're Aaron Rodgers you know forget forget hey you're Aaron Rodgers and I think you can fit the ball into windows that other quarterbacks can't he was turning down throws where I'm like no quarterback number 28 on the list wouldn't turn this down come on we got to do that so that was the big thing about Aaron Rodgers if there's a safety valve in an offensive play more times than not, he's looking for that he got to it so quick and and under, listen I, I'm 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 uh I, I I was I get you get older quarterback you want to preserve your body I'm not like harsh to that damn I watched my dad at 38 years old do that I'm all for it I get it you know Tom Brady all of that and we got on Tom Brady and Eli Manning towards the end of his career I get that but with Rogers Rogers ability is is better than those guys we're talking about at the end of their career Rogers arm is still elite all right I'm not gonna say it's in maybe some of the guys we're gonna get to like Allen and Mahomes anymore, but it's still an elite arm. He can make game-changing throws. you know. But, yes, to what your point is, Ahmed, it's the turning down of throws or not even letting some plays develop, and for no reason at all. It's one thing if you're Tom Brady or Eli Manning at the end of the career and the pocket's collapsing, and we go, man, I'd like him to stay in there and throw that ball down the field and take the shot but he throws the short throw, okay, I can deal with that. But there's too many with Rodgers where you go, there's nobody around you. You just took a five-step drop, and guys haven't even finished their routes, and you're already kicking it out to the back in the flat or whatever. And that's where you just go, why? What are we doing? Come on, you're too good to do that. You know, you're leaving too much on the field. So that's where it was really a little bit, you know, uh, too few and far between with big plays and big throws for Aaron Rodgers with, with the talent like he has, like I said earlier. So he was number five last year for you, which was the first time that he was ever outside of the top three. It's yeah. just how much you've respected him throughout his career. Mm -hmm. So eight right now is his lowest ranking ever in your list. Um, Pete puts in the narrative around each quarterback for yeah. all the quarterbacks here. And the narrative, he says, coming from Jets fans probably right now is Aaron Rodgers is the savior who will lead us back to the promised land. And then he goes in parentheses until we start one and three. And then we're all <laughs> over him. Um, no, but I, I think that is the idea. And he turns 40 in December. And yet there has been a regression with his numbers. But he's dedicated again at OTAs. He's showing up there. He's trying to learn. And you're disappointed in him partly because you still think he has the talent and he is not trusting it. Yes, so right. my question would be, yeah. can he start trusting it in New York, this is, is there still something there to show an improvement from what we saw last That's year? That's where I'm hoping the new team, the microscope, the New York media, the energy is going to push him a little bit in that area, right? He's a little out of his comfort zone. If he keeps throwing the check down to Breeks Hall and Michael Carter and Garrett Wilson's open too much, he's in New York. And you know Joey, you know, Joey WFAN is going to call it and be like, I, I saw Garrett Wilson open 74 times over the middle yesterday. Who knows? Garrett Wilson might say right. something. You're right, you're right. The Jets, they, they all will. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They'll be like, well, Rodgers doesn't throw it. Put Zach Wilson back in. <laughs> um, but, no, I, I'm hoping that's what that that does. A little bit like you heard me before the podcast, right? I talked about that's what happened to Brady a little bit. Brady got to Tampa Bay, and my criticism of Brady was too conservative at the end of the time in, in, in New England as well. Mm -hmm. He got to Tampa Bay. The, the new energy of the team, the expectations, 
you know, Bruce Arians not letting him off the hook a little bit, like, you know, calling him out. Oh, Tom's got to throw those balls down the field. We have people open, right? He said all those type of things. Mm -hmm. He pushed Brady into a corner to go, okay, I got to start letting it go here. Or everybody's going to look at me like I'm letting plays and yards and points on the field too much, right? And he adjusted, and damn, he became one of the best down-the-field throwers in football over the last year and a half. That's where I'm hoping – for Rodgers because to me one of the things I wrote it's all about will and want to for him that's really what it is is he willing to make some throws and take some chances in some tight windows and just take a few hits every now and then hey he's still got like I said a great arm he's got the quickest release in football there's no doubt about it. Still. He's still it's still the quickest release in football he's the best RPO thrower in the game him and Tua who I mentioned you yep. know at the time yep. nobody can fake a run and sidearm and get it out as quick as and as accurate as Aaron Rodgers he's the most accurate Accurate short ball thrower in the game. There's some real value to that. There's no doubt about that, right? Um, what was the other thing? He's still pretty mobile. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I'd throw onto that too, and why he's eight for a guy that I'm saying left a lot of points in yards, he's the best field general in football still. There's nobody still at the line of scrimmage that is better at getting his team out of play, screwing over a defense if they show their hand too early, and doing all the Peyton Manning stuff dummy snap counts, change the play, mixing up his snap count to get people jumped off, jump off sides. He's as good in the sport as that as anybody, and that's definitely where I give him a ton of credit still. Um, he had a thumb injury last year, Yep. right? And we yep. saw him holding it a lot of times. I mean, how much do you think last season was injury-related? I think it was a little of that, a little of not trusting the rookies, and that affected his decision-making. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to throw it to Watson. He dropped the ball, or I'm not sure he ran the right route, right? I think a little of that all played into it. Yeah, here are the numbers. So first five games, and then it was at the end of that Giants game that he hit it on a helmet. Hit it on a happened? helmet, exactly right. Hail Mary. And so the last 12 games, yeah, the completion percentage went down. The touchdown to interception ratio was worse. Rating went down. So the numbers do go down a little bit, but who knows? It's tough to isolate how much of that was injury and how much he was feeling that. Right. And how much it was just. Right. You know, I, I, I don't know with him sometimes. You know, he re, you know, he, he re aggravated it in the Cowboys game and threw, you know, darts all over the football field and it looked fine. Yeah. And then, you know, he's got another game that's not good and then it's a problem. So I don't, I don't know what to believe there. I'm sure it affected him to a degree. I don't doubt that, you know. I'm sure there was some grip issues, and within those grip issues at times, did that probably affect decisions where he's like, oh, I'd like to throw that, but I don't trust my control in the ball. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to question that stuff, you know. but I'm hoping we can see the guy get back to what we saw the years before that, which is you know, a little more flamethrower, a little bit more, hey, it's okay to throw an interception. It's okay. You know, We need explosive plays, and this is a team that's going to – they got explosive players. And, of course, in this conference where I just go, this is a conference, you know, you, you can't be conservative in, as, as we've talked about so many times, right? Yep. I mean, there's a reason Burrow and Allen Mahomes are in the Final Four every year here because they're going, we're going down swinging. Um, we're going to throw flamethrowers everywhere, and we're never going to be out of a game. And that's where I hope he can get to. You know, the thing that, you know, you talk, I talked about the conservative nature, and, you know, you, you go back, watch games. You can't, you know, there's too many games, too, within that where – you know, hey, there's three receivers to the left. The concept's good. The coverage is right for this concept. Throw the in cut. And there's just an unwilling to do that. There's an unwillingness to be aggressive unless it was a one-on-one -on -one shot. And I know we said that during the season a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just hope he can change that. And hopefully, you know, the Jets can kind of can push him down that road as well. And you saw it again in tape when you looked at it again. And you're like, the same thing. Same type same. of thing. Yeah. Same type of things. And then, But just what made it worse, I think, watching it again this time around, right, is you just go – Gosh, damn, there's still so many good damn throws where you just go, holy shit, r r you know, laser, rifle, off his back foot, across the field, drops it in a bucket. And you're just like, come on, come on. Now the pocket's clean and there's a guy open for 20 and we don't throw it. Like what? So that's where it was frustrating because when you just you watch it, you still go, woo. Yeah. My man can still throw the rock all over the field however he wants. And hopefully now he can just, like he's kind of saying, everything else right hopefully he can just kind of say that on the football field a bit like if you throw 45 touchdowns i might throw 18 interceptions gonna win the game mm -hmm. that's what i want from aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. this year well and maybe who knows maybe he'll add another dimension to his game because i think we have some video of him running and scampering around in otas yeah Look at this. he did this right he's running to the right no you know what 
No he, one open. Pump fake. Touchdown. Hey, he can still move. He can. <laughs> I mean, he's still quick in the pocket. I know you you turn on games and watch him, and you go, hey, he can still tuck it and run. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. You know, he, so that you can't just go downfield and go, oh, we're going to drop eight guys and cover. Now, Aaron Rodgers will tuck the ball and run for 15 yards up the middle. Uh-huh. All right. Now, he did pull his calf muscle the next day and more. No, he did. Right? he did. He did. Oh, right. So, <laughs> yes. and a play. lot of people looked at this and went, this might be the play that started it all. Uh, <laughs> and, but, and will he do that when the defenders are not wearing shorts and no shoulder pads? That's the question. Too, <laughs> that is the right? question. Right, right. Uh, uh, look look cool, though, no, for that. No chin strap buckle, typical Aaron Rodgers stuff, but still. You know, still the field general, still a special arm, and still has, I don't care what anybody says, and you've seen it already. I'm not saying anything you don't know, or really I think anybody. He still has the magic. that When, when he walks in the locker room, team goes, we can win. We're going to win today. We're going to win today. We got Rodgers. And there's something to that for sure. There is a debate out there yeah. whether this you know ultimately will be a good trade for I the know. jets and so yeah. um what the trade was was they swapped those first round picks this year they moved down a couple spots the jets did gave up that 13th overall pick and maybe that did come back to bite them because there's some rumors out there that they had their eyes on an offensive tackle and a lot of them went off the, yeah. the board uh, broderick jones right. is the name that pete gives me uh <laughs> gave up a second rounder they've got a conditional second rounder Next year, whereas he plays 65% right. of snaps, that becomes a first rounder, whether he retires or not, I guess, maybe. So it's like, that, that that's could where be a I problem. did not like that part of that deal. That's where I didn't understand why the Jets agreed to that. Like the Packers weren't going to keep him. Rodgers just, he was going to have to be a little ugly and put pressure on him. But that, that's the one part of the Jets trade where I go, I don't like that part of it. So what needs to happen for the Jets for this to be worth it? How far do they have to go this year or next year? I, I mean, I, I I just start with the playoffs. That, that's where I, I my expectations are not going to be like too crazy or unrealistic because of all that we've talked about. For all the things that you've heard me tell the guys at the gym and what I had to tell, you know, twenty five men this weekend in New Jersey. Hey Sims, how the Jets gonna be this year? Yeah. Right. And of course, I always have fun and go. Why'd you pick that team? You should have just pick the Giants. Life would have been better. <laughs> I mean, you just yeah. would have been way easier. But they all laugh. But yeah, everybody wants to know that. And but but you know, I, my standard line is the AFC is as good as I've ever seen. The AFC East is as good as I've ever seen. The Jets will be better than last year. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to translate to a definite playoff appearance. I mean, they were almost in the playoffs without them last I know. year. And I would think they get there. I mean, if you made me bet, I would bet they get there. I think yeah. their team is certainly that caliber, but some yeah. things got to happen here. There's some Patriots fans in our building that think that that will never happen. That, that's okay. Our yeah. boss, specifically. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, we didn't think the Patriots would ever win anything <laughs> for about 90 years either. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so if, if Aaron Rodgers just even has an average year, like yeah. an average Aaron Rodgers year, right. apparently he will break Many of the Jets' franchise records. It's crazy. For a season. So his last five years, yeah, attempts are like 550. The franchise record is Vinny Testaverde in 2000, 590 completions. Yeah. So, yeah, basically just what Aaron has been over the last five years, although that does include two MVP years. Let's I know. Not forget that, even yeah. though he might have had a little bit of a down year last year. Um, but, yeah, this is probably the best quarterback that the Jets potentially have ever seen for one season well he you know, listen he, he's you can put him on a lot of teams and go this is the best quarterback this team's ever yeah, seen that's he's, true. He, he for me is you know again he's in the special elite class of brady manning elway far marino this is an all-time all-time great uh, it's a, it's a, it's amazing i expect a bounce back year for sure for all the things that we talked about let alone their talent and the pressure of the situation and all that it's also amazing there just to look at that and go damn nobody's thrown for more than 4007 yards in the jets organization since joe namath in 67 i know right it, it really that is, is crazy that is, is crazy in this era where it seems like even like an average quarterback now because they're throwing the Gets ball to 4, so much 4000 yards yes. right i know it, it it is amazing um but but nonetheless yes i yeah. think they're a playoff caliber team i'd be shocked if he doesn't play better football and uh i'd be shocked if he's not a little more aggressive in how he plays this year as well in his own tier yeah still a goat question mark yep. the only other quarterback that you had in their own tier do you know who that was mm. jordan love his replacement That's over hilarious. in green bay and romeo dobbs said this recently on jordan love he right. goes, i think jordan is a really good quarterback when you go from aaron Rodgers to jordan aaron was a really great quarterback but i believe jordan can do the exact same thing so i don't really see what the big difference is dobbs added well dang. you know dobbs yeah dang is right Do you know th that's where 
you know, hey, you know, Aaron, he also said in that, like, hey, I learned a lot from Aaron Rodgers, even though he never really talked to me. That's what he said, <laughs> right? That's, yeah. So, you know, I think that said a little, too. There's a little bit of, I think, a little bit of a bitter, bitterness or a relief, probably, from some yeah. of those young guys that he's not there and, you know, over-scrutinizing them. He also is coming off a year where he saw Rodgers have his worst year. So yeah. he's going, wait, this guy could do that, that's too. That's true, yeah. Right? So I think there's a little of that. Uh, a little of like, yeah, probably a little bit of bitterness and how things went. Um, but I'm certainly not ready to say Jordan Love's going to be Aaron Rodgers quite yet. Yeah. But I think that's what happens when you leave and not everybody loves you and not everything's on good terms. Has Romeo Dobbs talked to Aaron Rodgers as much as I have talked to Albert Pujols? Who do you think has <laughs> talked to the other person more? I mean, it might you be might close. Have, you might have passed them up this weekend. <laughs> might be close. <laughs> All right, so we close that tier. Still a goat question mark, <clears throat> and uh, I won't say the name of this tier yet because it would give part it of it away. It gives it away, right? Uh, but we got three quarterbacks in this tier. We have some leapers. The leapers is we can part say of the it. part of the leapers. You're right. This is leapers and one Somebody other else. quarterback. Right. Uh, so we start with a leaper. Right. Number seven here. It's going to be a shock to maybe some of a the good fans shock of this or a team. A bad shock. What do you think? Well, you know what? Yeah. I think coming into this, if people, this. if people know you, right, they would have never thought that this quarterback would have gone this high in your ranking. Right. Now, they all think it's still too low, <laughs> but I think I think it's a shock for many Eagles fans that, right. that we have waited this long to say your number seven quarterback My is. My number seven quarterback is Jalen Hurts. That's right. I, listen, I'm not a jerk. I know I've said things and I've questioned them. I root for him. I hope he's yelling at me right there. I hope he's going, yeah, eat that shit, Sims. I'm number seven now. Well, I hope I proved you wrong. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for that. I, I hope everybody knows that. But I think when you just start out with this guy right away, you just go, the ultimate gamer. The ultimate gamer. He really is. I think you could argue that he's the, the best leader in the NFL right now. Right? I mean, I don't know of anybody. Any position. Any position. Just the, the, the effect. You know, Mahomes, I think, is right up there. Right? He's in that class to me where he's gone to that kind of guy. Lamar, I mean, uh, not Lamar, Mahomes, even Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. I think there's, I think uh, uh, you asked me, and I think it would be this group right there. Lamar catching a stray right there. Damn, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean, I didn't mean (laughs) to. Oh, wait, no, get that out of there. Well, I'll get into, well, I'll get into some Lamar here eventually, right? I'm not giving it away. (laughs) But um, yeah, so, so I think that's, that's the first place you start. You know, a guy where the lights come on and he just makes it happen and, he, and he's, he is the ultimate gamer. Then you talk about, yeah, the leadership and all that and the effect. It goes way beyond just what we see on Sunday. It's, it's about he lays the foundation on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays so they practice really well, and that's a part of him too. But right? the, the thing that shocked yeah. me the most when we were – because we were talking about this a little yeah. bit before the pod. Yeah. And I want to get you there okay, <clears throat> off good. the top here. Yeah. Because it was not something I've heard you say about him in the past. Right. <clears throat> Leader, I've heard you say before. Ultimate gamer, I've heard you say before. Right. But there was something else about your, your film watching on him that, that stood out. You liked what I said when I said, like, when you watch him back, he makes the right play and decision almost every time he yes. drops back to that's pass. That's not something I've heard you say yeah. before. That's where when I, I you know. I knew he was a good decision maker always, but I think when I, you know, again, go through this, this is why the, going through it again is a great thing. Like, okay, I formulated a list. Now I can dive a little deeper into some little details and nuances of what separates these guys mm-hmm. and what makes them special. And I think when I started to look at that, I just went, I mean, damn, does he ever make the wrong decision? You know, it's, it's the right decision play after play after play. You know, whether it's the RPO game, the read option, or the drop back pass. That's where I look at it. And then, you know, is it the throw is perfect every time? No. Okay. There's still some work we got to do in that department for sure. But his eyes and the ball goes to the right place almost always and has a great feel for, you know, aggressive and reckless, right? And that's where I give him, too. He's an aggressive decision maker. Even though he might not have an elite arm like some of the other guys we're going to talk about or maybe Rodgers we just talked about, you know, his toughness in the pocket, the way he sees the field, and um, and, and, and I think his just inability to – or his ability to be aggressive a little bit and just go, I'm going for it right here. Yeah, I mean – he makes a lot of big time plays and throws that are aggressive. Where, like, listen, the guy we just talked about, there's some throws where I go, wait, you're better than Aaron Rodgers. You throw the ball better than Jalen Hurts, and here he is throwing that ball, and you're not. Why? Right? 
And that's where you know I love Jalen Hurts that way. And really, here's his other thing. His worst decisions are not even bad. That's the other thing I love about him, where you heard me say, like, his worst decisions are some of his throw it up to A.J. Brown throws. And I they're kind of tactical. It's yeah. not like he's just like, oh, let me throw it up into the mosh pit. Who cares where it goes? He's going, wait, my freak is freakier than everybody else. Yeah. So I'm just going to give him a chance here. So I, I don't even fault him for some of that. And that's where, you know, that's where I think the gamer thing comes to, where he just go, wait, I got to give, I got to feel here. This is a time to take a chance, right? It might not be exactly what Sirianni or Shane Steichen told me on the, on the chalkboard, but I'm just going to use my natural God-given feel for the game and make it happen there. And that's where he is special. He took a big step up in yards per game, 40 more yards per game, big step up in quarterback rating last year. He was yeah. the fourth uh, highest quarterback in the NFL last year, a 101 rating. Um, a great deep ball thrower. Five-year, $255 million contract extension. And this came from ESPN. Jeremy Fowler covers the team over there. It says, they expect Hertz can make another major jump. Uh-huh. He has done it every year. They believe he can be one of those elite precision-type pocket passers. Okay. So I'm glad you're leading me down that's here. That's the question. Because that's where we're going here, right? Again, I know I'm viewed as the hater of Jalen Hurts, but there's a reason there's a recent report that they were trying to trade for Russell Wilson last year. And they, you know, again, there's some of these Not things that they were trying to, that they basically had a deal for Russell Wilson last right. year. And, and he that put the Russell kibosh turned it down. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, again, these are these are things that we all needed to see. That's why I had him low last year. I wasn't trying to be a jerk. I was going, wait, the team was awesome and you know, they played a team that finally stopped the team and they put it all on Jalen Hurts, and we went, okay, he needs to work on some things, right, mm -hmm. in that Buccaneers playoff game. You had him 25 last year, and that's right where you have Kenny Pickett this year and, like, Justin Fields and, like, other guys who that need to – just don't know, don't you know, don't know need to see more. Right, exactly. But he showed me more. I'm, I'm, Again, I'm not too prideful or stubborn that I'm not going to evaluate it for what it is. But what you about precision-type pocket Yeah, passer? so let's get into that a little. Because we know, like, one, he's, he's a great runner, right? We can't – we talk about this. This is – why he is where he is too he's a game-changing runner as a scrambler as an extending of plays and of course the game the, the the actual quarterback design runs so that's part of this I mean that's part of what makes him really damn good but the throwing is still yes there's more meat on the bone as they say I told you before I said there's still a lot of throws when you watch him where you go they, he misses throws. Now, they're so good, like we talked about with Trevor Lawrence out of Clemson and some of these other instances we've had. They're so good that the next play, they run for 15 up the middle or somebody else is open over the middle and he hits it and we forget about it, right? So there's a little bit more of a room for error there. And I'm not saying that as a negative. It's just the facts of the matter there, you know? And, yeah, he took advantage of a lot of it. But, yes, there is another level he can go. In that department. And where I would use the example is go, he needs, and I think they're probably the reason they're saying this, it, it, his flaw, again, was a little shown in the Super Bowl. You can't play, you couldn't play Aaron Rodgers the way the Chiefs played him, right? That's what I, where they just sell out for the run and give you looks where you go, oh my gosh, this is the greatest passing look ever. We have to throw the ball, right? Right. Allen, Burrow, Mahomes would have been like, whoa, 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 check fun coach called. We're going deep here. They got everybody at the line of scrimmage. They're selling out to stop the run, right? And I think that's where they're going. We can go next level. Because they're gonna the, the you know, they're gonna play teams, and we know the NFL. People are gonna catch on to what they do and how they do it. And it is gonna start we're gonna see more games this year where we're gonna go, oh, whoa, they're not running the ball on everybody like they were. Jalen Hurts is picking them all apart in the passing game. And I think that's what they're talking about. And the jump he made from last year to this year, I don't doubt what they say, that there's yeah. another level to go up in precision and all that. I would not have guessed still he would have been this high on your list because if we're sitting there and you got a draft and you're drafting your quarterback in the first round and sitting on the board, you have Deshaun Watson, you have Aaron Rodgers, you have Jalen Hurts right there. I know what I'm getting from this guy. That's what I like about it. I know what I'm getting. I know there's some things that I could put in my offense with him that's going to work no matter what. And then I am, I'm big into the, the leader, leadership. We can win the game because we got him at quarterback. And he's clutch, as we saw. So it's all of that. 
Does the hype become a little too much for me at times? Yes. Like I told you, I think a lot of people, if they played the way that Super Bowl went, my point with the Super Bowl, and he did a lot of awesome things, but you know my point. It was, the, it was a 10-point lead. He was on the better team. A lot of quarterbacks, if they were in that situation, would have been vilified. If Mahomes lost the game like that, he'd be vilified. Josh Allen, Burrow, whatever. That was that was my only point, yep. right? And I know he still had a great game, but my point was, again, like what I was saying, that he needs to improve some areas so teams can't play them like that anymore, right? Because, like, like I tried to – and I know this – I don't mean to sound – like, but, again, if a team played Mahomes like that – he wouldn't have thrown for 350. He would have thrown for 550. And, and I'm not trying yeah. to be a jerk. I'm just saying that's an area that Jalen Hurts can improve on. And I, it seems like it's all going in that direction yeah. as we're watching it. And Gi Giants fan Pete in my ear goes, and remember he dropped the ball that was a fumble the other way too. So they just no, want to make that's sure we I'm, got the yeah, – Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, he, I mean – He's biased, yeah, but yeah. – No, no. But no, but we get yeah. – Yeah, that's all I'm saying. And it's all going on the up and up. And, yeah, I'm, I'm – extremely impressed with the the turn he made in the throwing department yeah but is would i be going oh no he's good i'd be lying everybody going oh he went to the super bowl he's good everybody no you know me i'm here to keep it real he's got some work to do in that department as far as accuracy throwing consistent spirals like you saw in even the chicago game there's some games where it gets windy he doesn't spin the ball great all the time so the ball the wind can affect his football a little mm -hmm. bit uh but all in all, man, we got a guy going in the right direction. Yeah, you had him a little low last year. The Eagles were low on him last year, as we've heard with well, the reports. Well, there was the unknown. So That's what I think. Everybody was going, I don't more know if he can do this. I don't know if he can – you know, this is a big thing. Yep. We, we, we said it for Tim Tebow for seven years. Is he going to turn around throwing? Is he going to turn around throwing? Right? So it's not like one of those things where you go, okay, it's good, but now to go to the next level, yep. it's just not as easy as everybody thinks, and, and he did that. His new teammate, Terrell Edmonds, the safety that came over from the Steelers, says yeah. – Man, he's super smart. Um, he said you can just tell the way he can diagnose a play, mm -hmm. what he's looking at, what yep. kind of keys he's trying to check for, right. and he's trying to eye control the safety so they can get off leverage and everything. He's as advertised, and he goes out there every day with a hard hat on. He so does. Basically, that's, that's, that's what I was just saying, right? Just said, yeah. yeah. He's, he's really – He's really nuanced in, in how he sees the game and how he moves people and, like I said, the decision-making. It's really good. Now it's just, you know, like we said, painting corners, the appropriate ball here and there, just a little polish on this thing, and who knows where this could go. So what about his supporting cast this yeah. year? So his running backs, a little bit of a change there. You got what, Rashad, Rashad Penny, Penny's there, right? Now, now with uh, yeah, and DeAndre, DeAndre Swift, Swift right? Don't Miles about Sanders that. there anymore. Uh, Sayamulo, the guard is gone. They got a rookie, Tyler Steen, is penciled in as perhaps a starting guard now. Um, um, don't worry about it. Yeah, is what I'm telling you. <laughs> They're gonna be awesome. I think they'll still be pretty strong, right? I mean, you know, yeah, Tyler Steen, Landon Dickerson is the other guard. Yep. How about the guy they took in second round at center last year in Cam Jurgen, who could also play guard, right? So they got plenty. Don't worry about the Eagles roster and their supporting cast. It's awesome and awesomer and awesomeness all the way through. So, you know, the differences this year is just that, you know, they're the, the team. Everybody in football knows that. Yeah. And well, that's a question, too. And so I think that's yeah. a good, good last point on this is that Shane Steichen is gone. Yep. You know, he was partly the architect here. So was Nick Sirianni, who was obviously still there. Right. But you bring in Brian Johnson right now, and you do have a task this year of, yeah, there are some teams that showed a way to maybe play the Eagles, the Chiefs being one of them in the Super Bowl. Can Brian Johnson bring out a, a new level to this offense, or are there going to be some bumps in the road here I, early I, on? I would, you know, I would think so. I think, you know, again, that's where I think the passing and the passing offense can maybe take another step in that direction. Right where, hey, let's more concepts. He showed us he's he's great in all three step and five step drops, and we can do all of that instead of like maybe last year was a little more tailored around to what we think he did best. I think it can expand. I think you're going to see more ideas. I think they're going to, you know, as into the quote you said before, they're going to start throwing more on his plate mm -hmm. as far as concepts because they think he can take the next step to be an elite level thrower, like you quoted them as. And I think that's where you'll see that. He's in the leapers division this year. A Who leapers maybe division. Maybe he can take a little bit of, maybe not a leap, but a little bit of a hop. Maybe he can take a hop next year into the top five. We will see on your number seven quarterback, Jalen Hurts. The Eagles fans, there's, no, there's nothing you can hate in that one. Like, try me. 
Try me, Eagles fans. Wow, go. See I if like we can, it. Because Woo. it's not towards me, it's towards Chris anyway. So <laughs> see if there's That's anything right. in there that you can hate. Uh, let's go to number six now. All Your right. Number six quarterback, also a leaper, because as I said, Jalen Hurts was 25 last year. Yeah. This quarterback was 24 last year. And so he made a very similar Similar leap. Your number six quarterback this year is? Woo, similar leap. Trevor Lawrence, Jacksonville Jaguars. And, like, hey, with Jalen Hurts early in the year, I was going, oh, well, he's going to make a leap. Trevor Lawrence in, like, week three or four, I was going, uh-oh. I don't know if this is going to work. Maybe he, maybe he's just not going to turn the corner and look like the number one pick ever. And then, I don't know, week seven or eight, it all changed. It was really after the Bronco game, right, in, in Europe. When they played in London, they lost that game. From that point on, it's like you got a new Trevor Lawrence. And I think if I was going to have a a, a a headline on Trevor Lawrence, I'd start it with just a f- specimen who has it all. Yeah. And it's clicking. It's like it's here, and it's it's pretty remarkable, right? You know. Again, like I always, like I've said a few times here, it's it's always, you know, you watch and okay, and I I know we've got these four guys coming in today, and it's oh okay, well yeah, Rogers still throws it, no, oh, yeah, Jalen Hurts man, he's deep, good deep balls and all that, and then you turn on Trevor Lawrence and you go, whoa, holy cow, Rogers' arm was strong, but it ain't as strong as Trevor Lawrence's anymore. Trevor Lawrence's his arm is. It went to another level this year, and I mean this with the, his control of his fastball. It, it, that that's where it went to another level. You know, he's great size. He's a really good athlete, but the throwing different stratosphere halfway through the year, control the fastball like I ta- told, like I'm telling you, and it's a game changing arm. There's throws that he makes. You know, last 10 weeks of the year where you go, no, that, that's only for the Herberts and the Allens and Mahomes. Those are the only guys that can make those type of throws. And it starts to become commonplace almost in every game where you start to go, whoa, okay, there's, ooh, there's five or six in that game where I went, ooh. It just, and I didn't, you know, those, again, that's why I love the drill. To go back and see that, it, it makes me respect it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, you know, really what I'm impressed by. But it went far beyond all of the physical specimen stuff and got into the real quarterbacking stuff and clutchness and carrying the team. And that's where, to me, we're on the verge of, uh, you know, superstardom here with Trevor Lawrence. So I think a lot of uh, analysts are on the same page as you with Trevor Lawrence. And let me go to Bleacher Report here, also New York Times. Derek Clawson, a guy who watches a lot of film over yeah, there, has right. thrown out something on, on him. He goes, the most important development with Trevor Lawrence is that he remembered he's Trevor Lawrence. The end of the Baltimore game drove that home. Given the stakes, the degree of difficulty, felt like Lawrence firmly established himself as one of the quarterbacks who will go win you a game. He goes, timing, arm strength, accuracy. Lawrence, outside the numbers, one of the few dudes in the NFL who where that feels automatic. Uh, automatic. The field, the whole field's in play. Like the great ones, like we're talking about. We always know that. You know, he throws a ton of balls outside the numbers. They throw out routes like it's like every third throw. He's throwing a 12, 15-yard out route. And he just makes it like like it's ho-hum, ho-hum, I'm in my back foot. 12, 15-yard laser, first down. Okay, no big deal. I mean, that's where it's awesome. And that's where, to me, like the throwing, and I keep saying different stratosphere because it's not only the, yeah, cover two hole shot down the right sideline against the Ravens, you know, what was that, in the third quarter, second quarter, or, you know, the uh, on the run slant and go up the right sideline with the Cowboys, or, you know, the go route at the end of the Ravens game to win the game, where there was like, I mean, a 30-yard line drive with like no room for error, boom, on the money. And where, to me, that's where he went into, can be surgical with the offense, Mm -hmm. but went into, I'm just going to take the game over in backyard football, and I can do that too. His movement is insane for his size, right? I always look at him and go, it's just, he's Justin Herbert, right? That's what I kind of always feel like. But Justin Herbert's not as quick and as fast as Trevor Lawrence. That's one thing he's got in front of, over him a little bit. Hmm. And Trevor Lawrence's release, when he wants to throw, you know, just get the ball in the shotgun and get it out to a slant or a ball in the flat. It it's it rivals it rivals Rodgers and some of those guys in the quickness. I, he does not get the credit. And then he has what we've talked about. You know, I know we'll talk about with Herbert. Yeah, he's not here yet. Don't give obviously. it away. Don't right, give it away. <laughs> right. But Herbert, we talked about with Jared Goff a little. 
and we had one other one I feel like we talked about it with. But another guy where throwing over the line of scrimmage. I know, you know, you hear me say that. Daniel Jones, that was yeah. the other one I said. Way to go, Pete, got in my ear there. Yeah, that is the other thing that you, you see, and you know I hold that in, in high regard too. But, uh, yeah, he went from potential, you know, potential star and potential this to he entered the elite this year in my opinion what do you make of that four interception playoff game though yeah well after things were rolling yeah i mean they did win the game yeah won the game first off and i think that shows something in itself too sure i mean it just shows you like 27 nothing this guy he doesn't blink he doesn't care they don't blink whatever and then there they are in kansas city the next week and kansas city sweating it out to beat them. And if Christian Kirk dro- catches a deep post on the three yard line, we might have been going, oh my gosh, Jacksonville might upset Kansas City. You know, but the four interception game, you know, I, I actually talked to this is a good question. I didn't even prepare it. Like, Thank du- you. I talked to you. Doug Peter. Every now and then you have one. Yeah. Doug Peterson, I asked him about a little bit of this at the combine. And uh, because I wanted to ask him about, you know, one, okay, he threw an interception uh, on the right side and it was pass interference. All right, on Samuel, and they didn't call it. Remember, we were complaining about the playoffs. Like, all of a sudden, we're not going to call pass interference. Pass yes. interference all year long, but now you're allowed to hold the guy and throw him out of the way and catch the ball. Interception. He had another one where the tight end screwed him over. Uh, or, no, he, he just didn't see the backside corner. Excuse me. There was, a, there was a shallow cross. He just had a brain fart. You know, they made a good play on another one. You know, so I didn't look at it like from the way he missed some throws, he – Tried to fit a few balls in there. He shouldn't. And the other thing Doug told me is that, like, the the Chargers changed up their tendencies, like, total, totally. Like, where, like, their early part of their game plan was, like, totally off. The Chargers came out and played them a totally different way. They do a good job with that. And they weren't expecting that. So it took a little bit of adjustment period. But, again, just, again, the calmness and what he does in the second half, the audible – And then throw the deep ball down the middle. I believe that was to Zay Jones, right? You know, all of that was special. And I think that's where we're seeing tip of the iceberg and somebody that's, you know, on the cusp of being elite here. Yeah, and Doug Peterson thinks so too, as he told you at the Combine. And he said on the Rich Eisen show here recently, he goes, I think going into year three, year two with us as a staff, I think the way he played the back half of the season is the way he needs to start this year. There was a lot of confidence with him at the end of the year. That's the next phase. It's putting it all together. I feel like he's that guy, which he showed towards the end of the year, you can put the team on his back. And I think, I mean, he's got a perfect coach. I mean, Doug Peterson is going to go down as if he can have a a run here with the Jaguars and who knows? I mean, this is a good enough team to make a run in the playoffs and definitely flirt with a championship one day. No doubt. No doubt. Everybody get used to that right there. It's a good combination. Trevor Lawrence, Doug Peterson, Jaguars, Super Bowl contenders. Like, yeah, I think their roster is that caliber. You know, I know they're – I'm not saying I'd bet the most money on them to get there, but their team, it's it's there. The pieces are there. And I think, you know, yeah, that's what he did. He showed next level, I can carry the team no matter what the circumstances are. That's awesome. Run the offense, make high-level throws and decisions. Now – you know, a little bit like we've talked about with some guys on teams. The expectations are there now. So can we hit the ground running this mm-hmm. year, take advantage of all that, you know, still be really good with our mechanics and throwing the ball that way and be locked in like we saw. I think that's going to all be, you know, uh, really crucial. And, and, and listen, negatives, okay, maybe can be aggr- a little too aggressive. But my big thing, I think it's, this is a natural thing too, just watching it back where young quarterback, great arm, you know, you hear me say this a lot, can stay on guys a little too long and just having a better feel for the overall play, right? Like where I would tell you like um, some of the veteran good players were like, yeah, this is read number one, but I know versus this coverage that read number one's not going to really be there. So I'm going to look there for the sake of timing and maybe to get the defense to move, but I'm really not going to go there because I know this is going to be open over here, Mm -hmm. right? And I think that's something he's probably going to get a little better feel for, where he's like, wait, coach said this is one, and I still might – I know this is in the coverage, but I still think I can stick it in there. I still think I can stick it in there. I still think I can stick it there. And you're like, no, move to the other side. It's all good. You can't throw this versus coverage. And those are little things that he'll get better at and really are, are nothing in the long long run. Yeah, well, you know what I like to do? I like to scout OTAs and yeah. make my opinions based off Good. of that. And we have him throwing a oh, we do. long bomb to Zay Jones here in OTA. So there we go. Seemed easy for him. Oh, my gosh. Perfect. Hey, he can in rip stride. it. He can rip it. 
I mean, he really can. That's the one thing. I mean, his arm is – it's in the elite category and already. And he's got Kelvin Ridley this year. Calvin Ridley, good O-line. ATN's going. Evan Ingram signed back up. Yep. Yeah, Jaguars got a lot of things to be excited for. Um, and Bet MGM takes us there because – we take a look at the division favorites. So, Bet MGM division favorites for this year as we sit here right now. And this is something that I, I proclaimed last year. I'm taking full credit for this one because I was like, the Jaguars are going to be one of the heaviest division favorites in right, football. Right. Uh, and they're the, tied for the second biggest favorite with the Chiefs to win the West. The Jaguars also at minus 160. The only team with a higher chance to win their division apparently according to bet mgm is the 49ers right now wow. minus 185 you see all those who if you're watching on peacock and youtube the closest competition second in the division so for the jaguars it's the titans plus 350 so look at that so the titans are the farthest away from the favorite yeah right? you're right they are. That's the biggest gap. The biggest gap between first and second. So I'm claiming victory on my prediction that the Jaguars would be the biggest favorite to win their division this year. Yeah. But it's not surprising. That's a crazy thing. It's not surprising. No, it's not. It's not. And I think with this, you know, I think right, you, you see them, you know, we know why the Chiefs are there, even though the division's awesome. It's just the Chiefs, and it's seven years in a row of them winning it, right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, with the state of the rest of the AFC South and all the things that you said, the Jaguars are talented. It's there. Doug Peterson's a Super Bowl winning head coach. 49ers got that, I think, more of it because the rest of the division is a little bit down, especially Arizona and L.A., where you don't expect them to be anything special there. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not, sh I'm not shocked by that. I'm surprised that the Eagles are not in the minus. I was just going to say that. I'm so a little shocked by that. That's the narrowest gap. It looks like the Eagles are plus 100 right now and the Cowboys plus 175. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm ready to put the Cowboys wow. quite in the Eagles class. I know the Cowboys are really damn good and clearly one of the three best teams in the NFC. But, you know, in, in my opinion, the Eagles, and as we've discussed a lot here, is this they have a roster and a team that's kind of in a class of its own. You know, it, it's better than the Chiefs. Like I said, it's just the guy wearing red and one and five, he closes the gap and makes mm -hmm. it look like it's even or they're better. Um, so that's where it, it's really interesting. And Is that uh, is that a Cowboys effect, the fact that there's so I, many I Cowboy so. fans out there that just bet the Cowboys every year? I, I It's got to be the Cowboys effect. Everybody's always believing in the Cowboys. I'm a little shocked, too, that your Lions are such a big favorite. So are the Vikings. I mean, yeah. You know, again, they, you know, I, I understand you guys being the favorite, but, but by that much, you guys are plus 140. They're plus 300. I think I was a little surprised to see that one as well. I'll take it. You will take it. The action never stops at BetMGM. You can sign up now using the bonus code SIMS. Your first wager risk-free up to $1,000. So say you bet $100 on Lamar Jackson's Ravens to win the AFC North. If you win, you get $240. But if you lose, you still get $100 worth of free bets. Simply download the BetMGM app today or go to BetMGM.com and enter the the bonus code SIMS to make your first wager risk free. And as always, read the details how you get those free bets, what you got to do. So uh, and make sure you bet not, responsibly. You're not betting uh, to more than you can lose out there, homies. We want to protect the homies at all costs. That's right. But thanks to BetMGM for the information. As we move on, one more quarterback to talk about today. Yeah. And he is staying in this category of the Leapers and. I will let you finish my sentence. The Leapers and. La, 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 Lamar Jackson. Your That's number right. five quarterback. Number five, Lamar Jackson, right? Now, I know Trevor Lawrence had a better year. I know Jalen Hurts had a better year. That Again, this isn't about just last year. Last year is the most important part of this puzzle, but I can't erase, like, the five years before that where the guy was in the MVP conversation, you know? Injury, yes, a little concerning, and certainly part of the conversation here. But like, let's let's the headline for him is "Don't get it twisted." His passing is legit. I wish we could have found something that rhymed, but we couldn't. Okay, <laughs> we could. I mean, yeah. he is an elite, has an elite arm. He's an elite passer. And that's the one thing that I just when I looked at it, it, that jumps off the film to me actually when you watch it. As you sit there and you just go, his arm is elite in all areas. I mean, really, he's gifted. He's got great power. He's got great touch. I've told you what. I mean, we probably five times through this, this process. I don't know if there's anybody that has more releases in football other than Patrick Mahomes. 
when you really want to watch him game by game, nobody throws balls more sidearm or different ways than Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's on his back foot throwing corner routes and just flicking it up there 25 yards, backs coming out of the backfield. He's, you know, moving in the pocket, flicks it over there, great touch, power throws, can do that. And then, you know, here's the other thing that people are mistaken about. He's phenomenal in the pocket, phenomenal. You heard me say that before when I started to rattle things off. He doesn't get the respect for that. He doesn't look to run. He looks to throw. And then when all else fails, he runs. But his movement and sitting in the right spot in the pocket, oh, the pocket's collapsing, let me slide here and throw a sidearm out the corner pocket here. I, he can do all of that. And that's where, you know, I think people got to get off some of the narratives and just give him a little more respect in that department than, than what he gets, I feel like, publicly. So I think that's going to be surprising to maybe yeah. some people if they're just listening to this or you for the first time because normally the the – conversation with Lamar starts with the fact that he's an elite scrambler runner I know he, he can is change games with his legs he's the second best runner in the game other than Justin Fields right he still I would still give him the edge over Jalen Hurts right now maybe not some of the power runs but still in the open field and ripping off an 80 or touchdown I mean it's still special his ability extends plays and all that come on it's insanity in the membranity but it's it's a guy that like, as I told you before this show, you go back and watch and you go, man, there's so many good decisions. Man, there's so many high-level throws. And I don't come away in some of his worst games, the Giants game, the Bills game. I don't come away going, oh, my gosh, he was missing throws and making bad decisions. and Like, not at all. Their passing offense is average. It's below average in scheme. And then I would say with the talent they had around them in totality, probably about average too. So that's where you got to take that into account. And I think that's where people are going to see where they're going to play a little bit more through the passing game and the quarterback this year. I think you're going to see a little bit more of what he has to offer, you know, as a player. And it's, it's special. And I think now that they got some receivers there too, and they're going to play a little bit th more through the pass game. I think everybody's going to open up everybody's eyes to how good this guy actually is. So, yeah, let's get into the, some yeah. of the weapons here, too, and the injuries. I think those right. are the two big they are areas big. to focus with Lamar here. And the narrative that Pete put in to the rundown was that he is the Ravens. I think that's what most people think. But they also think it's a big contract. He got a five-year, $260 million contract, $52 million a year, 185 of that's guaranteed. It's a big contract for an injury-prone quarterback. Who has not? Who is not a great passer? Now you've addressed the great passer yeah. thing. You think it's more of the offense? Yes. But this is from Juiced Verage Four. He says, <laughs> he uh. says, hi, Chris and Ahmed. How much stock do you put into availability in the situation of Lamar? Does the fact that he is that electric on the field give him a bit more leniency after missing December and January football in back-to-back -back seasons? Yes. Yes. I think there's there's that. He's still one of the biggest game changers in the game. You know, they're some of the guys that were, you know, six through nine or, you know, five through 10 last year, man, they, they didn't play good. So they fell back. Right. And, you know, it, it, it's like, again, it, I know like 17 and seven and, you know, the stats aren't, it's not 5,000 yards and people look at it and all that, but damn, like, I don't come away from any games like I've said about other guys and go, oh, there was meat left on the bone. Or, like, he maximizes. You know, where he maybe gets himself in trouble a little too much at times is like, like uh, you know, making trying to make something too much happen a little bit. You know, whether it's a scrambling around in the back end trying to make this guy miss, this guy miss, this guy miss. He's going to try to make a play. Oh, somebody strips him like the end of the Giants game, right? Or even the bad interception he threw at the end of the Giants game. Those are really the things that I look at. But when you talk about seeing the field – appropriate throws it's so much better than like it's lazy for what people say and I feel like it's not people on tv like like listen I the Dan Orlovsky's of the world and all that they know it they see what I'm saying but it's 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 you know, as we know the social media world gets a hold of things and they become a part of the narrative and I feel like that's what's happened with him a little bit mm. you know and that's where I just think you're gonna you're gonna see a different guy this year not only it's not him you're gonna see different it's the offense will finally set him up to make him look different to everybody else all right so let's go into that yeah. we got a new offensive coordinator here 
Yeah. We got Todd Munkin, who was at Georgia the last couple of years, winning some national titles, was also an offensive coordinator with Tampa when Jameis Winston was throwing the ball That's all right. over, was there in Cleveland when Baker Mayfield was having his best year. Mm-hmm. Uh, this question comes from Coach Mills. What do you see Lamar's ceiling being with his revamped weapons and new OC in Todd Munkin? So some of the weapons are Odell Beckham is there, Rashad Bateman is going to be healthy, and then Zay Flowers, your number one wide receiver in the draft, is now a weapon for Lamar Jackson. I, I, I think he's a guy that this year with that kind of offense and the style they're going to play, like he can statistically be towards the top of football in some some passing areas that you know we haven't seen him be. You know, he's he's – He's. We always know he's been a special talent and a game changer from all those type of things that we're talking about. I just think people want to see, oh, you know, what we, you know, what I always say, surgicality and picking you apart. Yeah. And I want to go with them. Well, yeah, okay, he can do that, but somebody's got to help him. You know, they can't be run the ball, run the ball Lamar. You know, oh, play action. We got three people out in a route, and uh, it's like a go route, a crossing route, and a go route. Lamar, just jamming in there to Mark Andrews. Just throw another sidearm, fade away, 32-yard throw. Oh, good. Oh, he missed it. Oh, he's a f-ing back playing quarterback. That's why he missed it. I mean, that, I'm just so sick and tired of hearing that. Holy crap. You know, I don't ever – I didn't come away from any of the games I watched this second time around and went, man, Lamar just – what was he doing? Yeah. Why didn't he throw this? You know, not at all. I mean, I, I came away more times than not just going, wow, holy, woo. As I told you before, what did I say? A few t- There's so many more throws of, <gasps> don't throw that. Oh, God, he got it in. Oh, whoa, what a throw. There's way more than that than people realize. And his arm power, again, it might not, you know, Josh Allen's got maybe the strongest arm in the history of football, so I need to stop saying his name, right? His arm power is in the elite guys in football. There's, there's no doubt about that, and that's where I'm excited for Lamar. So you've already said today one of the parts that you use to evaluate these quarterbacks is their leadership yeah. ability. And Lamar's an interesting case because yeah. the players love him. Right. Play, players want to play for Lamar Jackson. Right. Um, but does he always lead by example? We've heard some rumblings in, with the Ravens. They'd like to see him show up a yeah. little bit more. I mean, he was not at the playoff game last year, which I, I found a little strange. I think it's odd. I'm because it's like he is the face of the franchise. Obviously, they had a contract dispute going on that went into the offseason. Um, but it seems like he should have been there around the team. Like, I, I, how, I, like I, as I a leader. Yeah. What is he like as a leader? It, it is like there's a, I, he's, I think, a phenomenal leader, and he's a natural leader. Like, guys want to follow Lamar. It's like we always talked about. They always want to follow the money and the baller in the locker room, right? Yeah. Oh, shit, he's the rich guy. He must be doing something right. And he's the baller. Okay, boom. They want to – I mean, Lamar is, like, truly, you know, he's like a, a, an, an urban legend. I mean, when you hear t- other people play against him and they talk about him, it's like, oh, I played against Jim Brown back in 1960. You know what I mean? It's like that. Like, yeah. the Lamar experience, it, it's unlike any other. And I think his leadership stuff is, like, it's tangible. It's easy. People know how talented he is. They want to follow him, and they believe in him. I think he's got to do a better depart- just job. And, again, this is me on the outside looking in and yeah, hearing rumors around football a little bit, maybe a little more detail, taking care of his body, you know, eating the right way so he's not sick and missing practices so many times over the last few years, you know, maybe going to bed a little bit earlier, right? I think it's like – I don't want to say maturation. I think he's a mature individual, but just becoming a hair more professional in how you approach things on a day-in, day-out basis, sure. I think that will take his leadership to another level. And, again, this is a, a special entity we're talking about, Lamar Jackson. And, like I said, he's a guy, and I'll be totally transparent. I had Trevor Lawrence when I first wrote my list in front of him. I did. And this is when I first did the list. hmm but it was one of those, as I said, I believe it on the kitchen table, and that was definitely one of the ones where I kept walking by going, damn, what? I can't put Trevor Lawrence in front of Lamar Jackson. That's insane. I can't do that. Trevor Lawrence, yes, he had a better second half of the year last year, and it's all on the up and up. But I'm not willing to say he's better than Lamar Jackson yet, not from what we've seen and what I think this kid's all about. 
And then there were four. Then four quarterbacks four. left. So Process of elimination. We take a look. Yeah, I think I know who they are. Yeah. I don't. I, I know the order, but I think some I of think people most people might, are going to know. I think they know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't think they're going to nail it exactly right. The four left. And if you're oh, only yeah, listening right. to this right now, tweet at Chris and yeah. give your four and see if we yeah, see sure. how many we get nail right. it. <clears throat> yeah. um, number one might be. Number one might be, yeah, and, and Tom Brady's got to be in there somewhere because he is emeritus, <laughs> right? He's like all-time quarterback. Yeah, you know? he gets an all-time spot yeah, here. in the top 40. Um, so let's take a look. The updated, do we have it? Oh, there it is. So here it is. The, the two tiers we did today, still a goat with an actual goat. Well done, Morgan. Good job with that. <laughs> with Aaron Rodgers and then the three in the Leapers and Lamar category. So out of those, let's even go – Top 10. Yeah. Let's look at top 10 because I don't want to include the rookies and the second-year guys in this, but top 10. Yeah. From what we've seen so far, how many of those guys could you realistically think one day maybe could be oh. number one? Oh, gosh. I I mean, Rodgers' days are behind him. Rodgers will never be one again. Stafford I mean, will never be one. I mean, it'll take a special one. year. I don't think Stafford will be either. But number nine, Watson – Number seven, Hertz, number six, Lawrence, and number five, Lamar, all have talent to be the number one guy, right? You know, yeah, we've got to see a few things from all of them, like we talked about and we broke it down, but I think they all have a lot of the attributes to go, eh, you know, the right year, the way they play, you know, what they're putting out there right now, you put it all together, do they have the chance to be, you know, a number one guy? Yeah, they do. And I think, too. 17. Jared Goff could definitely be a number one guy. And so does Ted J. Rowland, who uh, tweets us about my favorite team and quarterback and yes. your favorite team. Yes. Uh, and so it's a good way to get into the pod and Pete's favorite team, too. Uh, Ted says, with uh, best ability being availability, could a great 2023 for Goff and Jones make them leapfrog Stafford and Lamar in your rankings? Did Lamar bulk up too quickly after his rookie season, making him injury prone? You've addressed that a little bit. He goes, Goff and Jones are tall and strong, and without hitting the gym, they might avoid this mistake. So, yeah, I mean, Goff and, and Daniel, they, if they can play 16, 17 games, prove that last year, uh, was not a fluke and is just a, a step in the maturation of both of those quarterbacks, could they move up? Yeah, they could. I think Jones has a greater ability or talent, you know, what do I want to say, just toolbox yeah. compared to golf. J Daniel, like, hey, listen, they're both big guys. And it's a good good question by our man at Ted J. Rowland. They're both big guys. Jones is considerably thicker than people think. It's hard to tell in the uniform, but if you saw Daniel Jones, you'd be a little surprised at how big and rocked up he is. I mean, he's pretty rocked up. I'm not saying it's like Will Levis rocked up, but he's he's a he's more of a physical specimen than people realize. There's a reason he can run for 80 yard touchdowns, guys. It ain't, he's not skin and bones under there, right? Yeah. Um, so he's a guy that I certainly think has some things that where he could rise up. You know, rise up above Stafford. Certainly, I could see that. Lamar, uh, you know, that'll take Lamar being somewhat significantly average or below average for his standards. And, Heard and, again, probably yeah, is more yeah, exactly likely. right. And those guys really, really, you know, uh, maximizing everything they can take advantage of. So th that's what that's what I would say about that. You know, and the other thing with Lamar, Lamar, you know, he had to bulk up a little bit. He he was a little too frail, and the way he played and all that, he got. The, the, the last two injuries have nothing to do with his bulkness. That's that's what I would say to my man Ted J. Rowland, right? He had somebody fall on his knee, and he had somebody fall on his ankle. It had nothing to do with how big his biceps were or his pecs were or his quads were. Mm -hmm. um, he had to do that because, one, hey, he does play a physical brand of football. Two, he's not as fast as he used to be, so he needs a little more armor. He is playing in the pocket more. Right, and I think that's probably why he he's done what he's done, and he looks good. I think he's got just the right balance. I don't, I do not think he's too thick. You know, he he's not too thick. If you're running for seventy yard touchdowns against the Miami Dolphins, mm -hmm. then you're still fast yes. and in good shape. Yeah, he is fast, right. but he he doesn't want to do that as much this year. He wants to throw for six thousand yards. Well, again, you, you know, we had a question in here. Um, I want to say 
Oh, with the uh, with Cody Cunyard. Yeah, Cody Cunyard. You want to? Yeah, just throw that because sure, it leads us into this point real quick. Okay, he goes, "Hey, Chris and Ahmed, you guys are the goats. Why did I skip over this question? I don't if know you say what we're you were the goats, doing. Right. I, that's an automatic Please. read. Does the fact that we have never seen a running quarterback win the Super Bowl have any effect on guys' rankings like Hertz and Lamar? Is there a cap to how you rank these players? Yeah, well, it's it's not. I don't put a cap on it, but I think that that conversation brings you know brings some of their like especially hurts his flaws to the table like, like we're talking about there you know again yeah i was you know one of the reasons i was probably a little negative on hurts and that style of play even before the year was, was because of this i'd been saying this for years we, we've lamar jackson and the ravens can't get to the super bowl playing that offense so can another team really do it at some point you're gonna have to stand in the pocket and make throws right the eagles almost did it but they finally got to a team that said we're going we're gonna to go all out on making you play quarterback, quarterback, like the traditional quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to go all out on that. And if you beat us that way, then so be it. And I still – and again, and that's what they did, and that's what we're talking about. If Jalen Hurts wants to enter the top five, those are the things he's got to improve on. But, yeah, there's still that question there. And I also think to that point, that's why Baltimore's changing the offense a little bit. They're going, damn – this, the, the room for error to play that way and win the Super it's just so low. And at some point, you're going to play a defense that either goes all out to stop the run or has big dudes up front that can slow down the run, and you're going to be in the same boat going, man, I wish we threw it a little bit more in the regular season so we'd be a little more prepared for this, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's a little more true maybe for, for Hurts than it is Lamar. You know who we saw throw a little bit more in the regular season last year? Geno Smith out west with Gino. the Seahawks. Had a yeah. coming out year. Check West C71 says to you, I am not sure if I understand your take on the quarterbacks from 14 to 9 being ahead of Gino, who you had at 15. Uh, he says, with the yeah. exception of Cousins, who had a great year. So is it more consistent production or the career? What gives? And he goes, in parentheses, yeah. awesome show, though. Uh, which good, is com good comeback. No, good it's comeback. a great question. I think some people do get, you know, that, that confuses people because they go, wait, Gino had a great year last year. Listen, last year has a lot of importance. We know that, right? But I'm not going to just take, okay, wait, one guy had, you know, one good year. This guy had an average year for his turn, for his standards, but had 10 other great years. I can't just go, oh, wait, the one guy that had one year, I'm going to say he's a better player now than the guy who I've seen do it for 10 years, right? You know, even though this last year was not his best, some of those, and Gino, of course, is the perfect standard where I've only seen it once, right? Yeah, I couldn't put – I know his year was better than Russ's, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you if I had to pick a team and do all that, right, that I was going to pick Gino in front of Russell Wilson for everything I've seen Russell Wilson do all the way up to this point. And, and you know, so that's where I think it does confuse people at times. Like I had some people text me that last week. They're like, oh, he's got – what's up? I don't understand. You got Gino and you know, Gino behind Russ. It, it's not – last year's important, yeah. but that's not everything. And it was not, yeah, yeah. If it was all about the numbers. You would just go to Pro Football Reference. I could just go. Let's go to quarterback rating or yards <laughs> yeah. or touchdown passes. We'll just go by that, right? Yeah. Uh, so that that's that's where we're at at Check West C seventy one. But if he does it again, Gino. If he does it again, and we see like Russ, even if Russ just plays, you know, a little bit better, and it's still not good, then yeah, there's a good chance that you know, yeah, okay, two years in a row now. Two, two years of average play by Russ. Maybe this is exactly what he is now, and then that'll that'll make me adjust and, and rethink it. We got one more question. Oliver Kent 98 says, who has the potential to be the biggest riser faller this year? Feels like someone like Jordan Love could find his way into the top 20 in 2024, whilst Russell Wilson could see himself mixing it up with the rookie quarterbacks. Love the pod all the way from London. Oh, we knew that, Oliver. Ah, uh, what up? Uh, well, uh whilst is that how you say it right. yeah whilst i guess whilst yeah. russell well, russell wilson um all right so we kind of talked about this last week and yeah. you said justin fields yeah and you, and you said come work with come me work with you heard jordan anything? love same thing no i don't think they've reached out to us yet at all but i would love it i okay, really would so, yeah jordan love is one that you've said yeah and justin fields could make a big jump right. so maybe it's more of the i could see kenny pickett Kenny Pickett. Yeah, you know. Kenny it's Pickett. The second year guys, yeah. any of the rookies, obviously. Yeah, right. I think so. I think if you, you got into that. I could see also, just to throw some other names in for, for worthy of the conversation, Mac Jones. Mac Jones, again, 
He's better than what everybody thinks he is. It's better than last year. It was the shittiest <laughs> offense in football. Let's not forget that. With like average receiving talent around him too. That usually doesn't mean you're going to light up the scoreboard and throw over 5,000 yards. So that's another guy I'd say he could be a riser for sure. Yeah, taking the rookies out of it. We know C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson who are open up eyes already yep. could rise. Deshaun Watson at nine like we talked about. He's not the type of talent to be in the top three or four. I know that if he plays the way he plays, right? That'd be another one. Two at 21. Two at 21 for sure, too. He does does what he did last year and, and stays healthy and all that. He's surely going to rise, you know. But, again, like we talked about with some of these guys, and, and again, it's no disrespect. Yeah, there's still a little bit. Two was a little bit like Jalen Hurts two years ago where it's like, yeah, it was good. We got there. We Playoffs. But there, I got to see more. There's still some things about – your team, where when people break down your team, when they talk about the flaws, your name is still at the top of the list there too quickly. And I'm not trying to be a jerk by that. It's mm-hmm. just like we talked about with Jalen Hurts early in the show when they, you know, they ended the, the Bucks playoff loss. So that's where we got to see it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. Two quarterbacks who will not rise who are in your top ten. I'm just going to say that. Matthew Stafford at ten. And Ryan Tannehill at sixteen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna You're make gonna a say, bet. I'm gonna make a bet. They don't rise. They will not rise. How they dare are where they are? How like, dare you go against your old favorite quarterback? I love He's still my favorite quarterback. Yeah. He's my favorite quarterback of all time. I think you're 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 probably safe with that. But it's it's hard to see how they can move their way up the list. But it's still an accomplishment that they are where they're at, especially with Stafford and his injuries and Tannehill with the ups and downs kind of, yeah. of the weapons that he's had in That's Tennessee. Right. Tannehill is like the ultimate. Like, don't look at the numbers and the stats. You got to watch some games, watch some film, and you start to go, damn, yeah, oof, gosh, nobody's ever open. He's got mm-hmm. nobody he can throw to, yeah. right? So uh, we'll see. But I, I think it's a fair assessment. We'll see about that. We'll see. I'll tell Matthew Stafford on you. <laughs> and, and we have seen, too, last thing Last thing I want to say, Columbo. Oh, look at you. Um, uh, and Pete said it in my ear, too. It's like there there is a little bit of a changing of the guard. We do see some, some other names, some Definitely. younger names, and some of the quarterbacks that have been established in the top five, the right. Russell Wilsons, the Aaron Rodgers, they are dropping down because, what, it was – Lamar was 10th last year, and so it's people are like, oh, how did he move up to five? It was an injury-plagued year, and it was like, well, part of it was he still did some great things when he was out there. Definitely. And the other part of it was a lot of those quarterbacks around him, Rodgers and, and Russell Wilson and Dak Prescott. They all took a, a step little back. bit of a step back. Yeah, definitely. Brady retired, right? And Brady yeah. retired, so yeah. that, 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 But that's... Brady was never in the top 20. Never. Anyway, so. The hell with that guy. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I, you know, there's a lot that goes goes into that. And, again, like I always say, and anybody that listens to our pod, we know, don't listen to numbers numbers and 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 win loss record is not always on the quarterback and you know me I'll tell you when it is and I try to sit here and tell you when it's not so we'll see where it goes but damn I think it is a changing of the guard that's for sure yeah you know we kind of saw it a little last year you guys could do process of elimination you know who's in the top four but yeah the top six is all guys right I'm just off the top seven sorry excuse me are all guys that are still in the what the first five six years of their career basically yeah right and i think that says a lot the best compared to to where we were you know when you and i first started the pod where big ben and stafford and entrenched russell and brady and all those guys were a part of this that's no longer the case and that was one more thing brought to you by colombo which is streaming now (laughs) on peacock (laughs) way to go thank you (laughs) yeah this guy got colombo's gotta start giving us royalties we're giving them like a comeback here that's good good it's a good show people should watch it all right everybody that's it we did it we got one through four coming wednesday the final four get your get ready get your popcorn ready all right um but but everybody thanks for the questions i hope you appreciated this this uh little exercise once again Eight through five in the books. Ahmed, thanks for making it back from your baseball game. Yep. Driving the ship as always. You know where to find us. Subscribe, rate, review. Wednesday is the final countdown. So I hope you enjoy it. And again, please send in the questions. Be good, be safe. See you Wednesday. Clap it Clap up. Clap it up. Yo, 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 thanks for watching, homies. It's the off-season, but you know there's no off-season for us here at Unbutton. Me, Ahmed Farid, we're going to hit all the stories. So hit subscribe for us, okay? We got a ton coming up. My draft prospect rankings, my Sims Top 40 quarterback countdown, and videos of me and NFL QBs playing catch and talking about their development and mechanics. Again, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. Peace out, homies. See you soon.